Hello and welcome to another video. In previous videos, I showed you how to develop different types of agent using LangGraph, such as React agent and Supervisor agent. Also, I showed you how to design and develop short-term and long-term memory for your agents using LangGraph and Neo4j Knowledge Graph. You saw that we can keep the history of the agent into the Knowledge Graph or any other databases that you are using. However, this is not everything about the agent memory. When it comes to the agent memory, history is not enough. We need to develop something that updates itself. And when I use the terms update, it means that the prompts inside the agent should be dynamic, shouldn't be static, manual, and you need to update it through the time. The way that agent is responding to the users should be specific to the way that they are interacting with the agents. So in this video, I will explain to you what are these types of memory and where to use each of them. And for those who don't know me, my name is Homayun and I open this channel to help you be updated with recent technology and show you how to implement them efficiently. So if you are not subscribing me, please push that subscribe button. When it comes to the agent memory, there are three types of memory that we should pay attention to. These three are semantic memory, episodic memory, and procedural memory. Semantic memory is the facts and knowledge that user gives to agent by interacting with the agent through the time. This knowledge can be basic knowledge such as name or last name of the user, or it can be a task-specific knowledge. Imagine that user is using the agent to send an email or to write an email. But user asks our agent to remember always sign the email by my name and job title. From now, agent remembers that this is the name and job title that I always need to add to the end of the email writing for this specific user. Implementing semantic memory is interesting. You need to define two different tools for your agent. An agent will interact with those tools to connect to the database and store or retrieve the information. Whenever an agent wants to store something, it will embed it and save it to the vector store. And whenever an agent wants to retrieve the information, it will do a vector similarity search and retrieve the most similar vectors from the vector database. In a simpler term, you are designing a naive rack system that agent has access to it to add information or to retrieve information. The next memory is episodic memory. But what is episodic memory? If you are familiar with the prompt engineering, with the basic prompt engineering, there is a concept named few shot example. Few shot example is Different example that we give to agent into the system prompt and we tell the agent that if this is the input, this should be the output. And we do this multiple time and by doing this, the accuracy of the answers gonna increase. However, there are not just five or three scenarios that we define the examples. These scenarios are variable for each user. So the way that we can define these few shot examples dynamically, it's through the episodic memory. There are three main reasons that we need dynamic few shot learning. First of all, that I mentioned earlier, user specific examples. Each example in the prompt will be specific to each user based on their conversation history. Secondly, it's a query relevant selection. So in this way, we retrieve only examples that are related to the current query, rather than adding 60 or 70 examples to our prompt and increasing the context size, we just retrieve those that are related to the input query. And lastly, it's an automatic adaptation. Our agent scales naturally as more examples are being collected without requiring manual prompt updates. We should also use dynamic few shot learning to overcome something named position bias or lost in the middle. But what is this? 
It's been proven that when you give a long prompt to your LLM, there is a high chance that some parts of that prompt not being seen by your LLM. So imagine you are giving 70 different shots, different scenarios to your LLM and LLM doesn't see some of those scenarios and by the chance the input query is exactly one of those scenarios that LLM is not seeing them. What will happen is that hallucination happen in the response. But by using the dynamic view shot learning, this problem will be solved. Because you limit the amount of the shots that we're driving through the vector database. The last type of the memory is procedural memory or the system instruction. Procedural memory is a kind of system instruction that agent use it in order to call different types of tools generate response in a specific format and guideline and taking decision that either it should respond to something or not. Unlike other memory types, procedural memory defines how the agent operates rather than what it knows. But how procedural memory will work and it updates through the time. First of all, user will give the feedback to the agent. And then the agent analyzes that feedback and understands that it belongs to which parts of the system prompt. Then an LLM calls will happen and a new prompt will be generated using the user's feedback. Then we check that if the new prompt is not similar to the previous prompt, we replace the new prompt instead of the previous prompt. So up until now, you learn three types of agent memory. But how you can implement these types of memories. There are two main ways that you can implement these memories, which are hot pass updates or background processing. In hot pass updates, memory updates occur during active users interaction. This can be good when you want lower latency for memory consistency, higher response latency, and single agent to handle both of these tasks. However, in background processing, memory updates occur asynchronously after interactions. In this way, the response time will be faster. However, you require two different agents to handle these two different tasks, and this can increase the complexity of your system design. Also, the update does not happen at the same time, and there would be a potential consistency gap. And these are three ways that you can add memory to your agent and increase the reliability and the accuracy of the response. In next video, I will show you how to implement these three memories using LangGraph and LangMem. Thank you for watching this video and see you in the next one.